Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dan H. I hope you enjoyed the exciting intro of me moving the general over about two feet. I did it for a good reason, though. Today on the project, we are going to be repairing these paint chips. So hang on tight. We're going to do some exciting body work. This is the last step before we complete the ZJ front end. So let's do it. Okay, so we got a really bad paint chip right here from the accident. We got a chip right here. We got some Gorilla Glue up here. More glue down here. Another big chip at the bottom. And the infamous <laughs> hole drilled for the zip tie that used to hold the bumper on. So, the mission for today is to clean up this whole front end and get some paint on it. Make it look a little better. So, I'm going to start off by sanding it all down. All right, I'm gonna start with my DeWalt DA sander. Got an aggressive 220 grit on here. Um, gonna take this down, save some time really fast. It's just a small area, so uh, gonna get this done, sand it out. Now the big paint chip used to stop right about here, but as I kept sanding, I kept revealing more and more rust spots. So that means this crack goes much further into here. So I'm gonna keep sanding till I don't see any more rust, and I'm gonna keep going till I see that all the primer underneath has nice contact with the metal. There, that's looking good. All right, and I'm going to do the same for this spot over here. I'm going to get all this crack up and down this seam on the fender. I'm going to get off the glue, and then I'm going to take it over to this drilled out hole and sand that down too. crap guys don't don't ever get gorilla glue on your vehicle paint you will not get it off all right guys i am going to take this opportunity with the hood up to mask off anything I don't want to get painted or dirty. So I'm going to use newspaper. What up, Trump? Nothing like a newspaper blanket. All right, guys, I got my power setting. All right, guys, I got my power setting on low, and I'm going to try to plug up this hole without burning through a bigger hole. So <laughs> let's give it a shot. Well, the hole is closed. Looks like crap. Let me grind it down, see how it comes out. <laughs> all right, got the hole all filled up. Going right for the body filler. All right, so I don't have any huge holes or body damage, so I'm not using body filler. Instead, I'm using the uh, top coat, the glazing and spot putty, glazing putty. And I'm gonna coat that area 
fill in the gap where I just welded. And a little bit of hardener, a little bit goes a long way. It's probably more than enough. All right, gonna mix it up. It's gonna wanna keep folding it in. It's not a great idea to stir because stirring traps air bubbles. All right. It's going to apply just a little bit. So I can fill those little holes. Hmm. Thanks, love. stuff. Alright, I'm just going to wet sand a little bit. 400 grit on the foam pan just to bring down the clear coat a little bit so more base coat will stick to it. All right, guys, I went over everything that I want to paint with the 400 grit sandpaper on the foam pad so I could keep everything nice and smooth. I'm not just doing the areas where the damage was, I'm pulling it back more to blend in the areas that I want to paint to the areas that already have paint on it. So what I'm doing now is I'm wiping down everything with a paper towel with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I want to clean off all the soap residue, I want to clean off any oils from my fingers and any dirt that's on the Jeep. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape off the front corners, the very tip of the areas that I need to prime. You know what? Let me just grab a sip and I'll show you where I'm going to make my progressive tape lines. So as the water dries from the wet sand, you can see exactly where I need to prime. I'm going to tape it off somewhere across here and I'm going to prime this area and then I'm going to sand down the primer. Then I'm going to apply the base coat somewhere up to here. Then after the base coat, if all goes well, I'm going to put the clear right up to about here. All right, so I just masked off everything I don't want to get primer on and I'm just going to wipe down the exposed areas with some tack cloth. It's an old tack cloth, but it should still work. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry about the uh, lighting and the shadows. It's just that time of day. All right, I'm gonna keep shaking her up. And then we'll prime. Here we go. And I'm trying to get nice even coats and cover everything that I sanded. All right, well, it's getting dark on me once again, <laughs> but at least there's no shadows. So I'm gonna take the 400 again and I'm gonna blend down this uh, primer line and then I'm gonna go back over the front of it with uh, 800 and then uh, smooth it out a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna be very careful on this edge. I don't wanna expose the metal again. 
this in, I'd have to reprime. Probably won't either way. <laughs> right where I did my hole repair, I touched the primer to see where it was dry. So now I got a fingerprint in it. I'm gonna try to sand it out, but I suck. Sounds like my neighbors are listening to Kings of Leon back there. <laughs> Why does that song sound like the dude's got the hiccups? You know that I can hit somebody. You know that I can use somebody. <laughs> I'll just uh, stop singing. You're welcome. So I just want to really work that primer. Try to get that little edge out between the paint and where the metal was exposed. All right, I'm cutting it real close right here. So, I think I'm gonna move on to some 800. Smooth it out really well. I'm gonna get some fresh water too. Every time you change sanding paper, grab fresh water. All right, I'm going to go over everything that's going to get base coated one more time with 800 grit, then dry this off for base coat. All right, going to wipe her all down. Get it ready for base. Yeah. And <laughs> this Jeep is filthy. I don't condone painting a filthy vehicle. You don't want to get any debris or dust or dirt or especially pollen this time of year on a vehicle. But it's a freezy. <laughs> I'm just going to do my best to fix it up. Again, like the bumper, it doesn't have to be a showcase, show car job. I'm just going to get some paint on it, call it a day. All right, so I'm doing the old curled over computer paper trick to mask off where I don't want to get base coat. Uh, this is good because it's usually the cleanest paper around, lint free, and if you curl it over, it gives you a nice blending area um, and you won't have that hard line like if you just taped it off. So uh, this is all good and time to base it. All right, we got uh, charcoal metallic base coat. Uh, this is some online stuff I got. I tested it out on the bumper. Looks like it could be an okay match. Hope it does the trick. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Point of no return. Gonna do a nice dusting. Get it sticky. Nice and light first coat. Nice and light, nice and even. All right, gonna wait a couple minutes, let this tack up, and then I'll apply a second coat. And when you're using a rattle can, you always want to keep it smooth, keep it moving. Keep the nozzle the same distance away from your surface to keep the stream consistent. If you paint too light, you can always go a little heavier. But if you go too heavy and you blob up, you can't take that back. Now, 
when I do a spray can job, I usually buy more than what I need because I don't like the paint when the can gets fairly low because then you get spatters. Uh, I tried to keep this as cheap as possible, you know, in the spirit of the free Z. So I only got one can. Um, so, so I'm debating whether or not to just call it right here and save what I have in the can and uh, not mess up what I did so far. All right, so far it's looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead, save a little bit left in the can, call it a night. Gonna let her cure up in the morning and I'll do clear coat tomorrow. Hey, 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 what hole, right? All right, good morning. It's all dried up. Not too bad on the hood, but I'm not too thrilled about the fade and the blend on the uh, fender. The hole came out great, but the paper, when I peeled it over and folded it over, it just... Uh, didn't leave enough space to blend. So you'll probably see that after I clear. I'm out of spray paint, so I can't go over it. But I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. And I'm gonna clear just about up to the J, right to where it's kinda hazy. All right, time to tape it off again. All right, the general's all masked off, ready to paint with some clear, and I just found out a coworker of mine, Brian, actually does paint. So, uh, next time, Brian, I'm coming to you. This, this is a lot of work. It really is, you know? Just this small little scratch has me masking off this whole corner of the Jeep. And it probably won't even come out good because this fender has got such a hard line, it blended very poorly, so. I guess uh, I won't quit my job and uh, I won't take up painting. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that. Got a nice run up here. Mm-mm-mm. Gonna have to wet sand that out. Make sure it runs evenly then. Let it drip all together. Don't be afraid of the run. <laughs> I overran it. <laughs> I think it'll be right. All right, guys, we are all done with this backyard can job. Actually, that's a great name for the title of this video. Probably gonna use that. Um, all right, let's uh, remove the tape. See how we did. All right, guys, from this perspective, it looks really good. You can definitely see the orange peel, and I have some runs here. That's to be expected when you're doing a backyard can job. Uh, the blend is not bad at all right here. I'm actually pretty impressed with the way the top came out. Um, I'm going to wait a couple months, well, a couple weeks, and then I'm going to sand this clear coat and then polish it up and make it look a lot more uniform. But that's the hood. That came out really nice. The fender, <laughs> not so much. You could definitely see the poor blend job right there. But I am really pleased with the way that hole came out. It really turned out a lot better than I thought it would. All right, guys, there you have it. My backyard can job. <laughs> all in all, it's not terrible, but I pretty much painted this thing in the worst possible conditions. I got pollen everywhere. Looks like it's about to rain. Uh, I'm uncovered. I got no protective gear on whatsoever. 
Um, I'm covered in sawdust because I'm actually doing a little remodel on the garage, making some room for shelves. So everything's all torn apart. This is probably the how not to paint video. Maybe I'll rename it that. So either way, it's going to come out all right once I wet sand down those globs and runs and I'm going to buff the whole thing uniformly. It should be all right. It's good enough for Freezy. Um, so that's it, the General Grievous paint job, backyard can job, and how not to paint video. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.